to my mind, on one's way through the world, what matters is people. It doesn't matter about anything else, it's people. This is the story of the people. Most of them unpaid volunteers who banded together and worked hard for 20 years to secure the future of Tudor House, a much-loved part of the city of Worcester's vibrant history. This is Tudor House at 20, the People Edition. In exploring Worcester, you know, as the children got older, we would come into town and do the museums. And I soon discovered that the Museum of Local Life, which was in this building, was far superior to the City Museum because this building was packed with interesting things. We came in 2001 and discovered the, music, the Museum of Local Life, which we thought was delightful. I used to bring our sons to the Museum of Local Life quite regularly when it was open. Marvellous museum, and then they come and shut it. I was very disappointed to read that it was going to be closed. This was a great shock to people, so a group of volunteers, John Bennett, Brenda Sheridan, Barbara Jenkins and me, approached the City Council and suggested we form a charitable organisation to keep the house open. I saw an advertisement in the local paper saying that it was a possibility that we might try and keep Tudor House open. Saw an advertisement or an article in the paper about a group of people that were going to try and keep the building open to the public. And my parents told me that there was going to be a meeting, I think at the Guild Hall, I remember going to the Guild Hall. So it just seemed that out of interest I should go to this meeting, which I did. So I went along to the Guild Hall meeting, there were several other people there who um, eventually remained being volunteers for a very long time and we formed a very um, united band, very keen to keep it open. It could be rescued and, and uh, keep the house open to the public it was marvellous, so we, we were both well up for that. John Bennett phoned me up and said, we're trying to get this off the ground to take over Tudor House uh, Museum. It's a museum. Could you join us? I said, John, I've just retired. The first task was to form a charitable company limited by guarantee. The City Council gave that company a license for three years and we set about recruiting and organising a volunteer force to take things forward. One of the things we had to sort out at a fairly early stage was who was going to do what. Things sort of develop, which you find a little bit when you start working alongside Jim. <laughs> um, really, it was just sort of providing that administrative support at the start. Right at the beginning, when we didn't have anything, we were faced with an empty house. The house was built in 1525 and beautifully exhibits many aspects of the timber frame buildings of its time. That, that Museum of Local Life was so full of all sorts of stuff, you couldn't actually see the building. It's only when we got here into an empty place, you realise, look at this, look at this. When we first started, it was, it was nothing, there was just nothing to see. We used to say, come in and have a look round, but there wasn't an awful lot to see in those days. As soon as we could open, I was outside chatting to people and that's what I enjoyed. We said to people as they passed by, do come and look at Tudor House. Uh, we were very welcome to come and look and see what we're trying to do and we can give you a cup of tea or coffee. So we got a kettle and cups and saucers which we managed to accumulate lots and lots of little china cups and saucers so when people came in they you know, really were remarked on having a cup of tea and a nice cup and saucer. The, the, the thing that was making any money was, was, was the cafe. We had to clear out all of the old stuff, take away all sorts of old displays and set up new ones. The wealth of Worcester came from, came from wool. In the 1500s, Worcester was producing the best broadloom cloth in the world. It was recognised as such. And the house had been uh, occupied by weavers, so I made a loom. The first, the first loom we had. Because Tudor House was actually built by a clothier, 
and two of the broad looms were in the Tudor house as it is now. So we got involved in setting up the museum. I did a couple of drawings. There was a big illustration. Oh, in the heritage room, I did a, a big picture of a medieval weaver. The emphasis at all times was on improving the displays and giving an excellent visitor experience. I joined Tudor House in 2006 when I retired from teaching. At that time, Tudor House was thriving and developing, but the trustees knew they needed to develop an education programme, bringing primary school children into the house. So I was involved with Margaret Panter, who had, was a teacher for her working life, so of course well involved in what was needed in education, so I came to help set things up. So having done a couple of hands-on history days here, we did toys and games through the ages, so 2,000 years of board games on a table and various rag dolls and things. We also set up affordable and interesting educational activity half days aimed at primary school children. From our visit to Tudor House Museum, the children always come away with many, many tales and stories and examples of how their learning has been brought to life. As the three-year license was coming to an end, we were served with a shock. Worcester City Council proposed to us that we should pay £10,000 a year rental. On behalf of Tudor House, we took up negotiations with the City Council about this £10,000 a year they were demanding. They proposed to Worcester City Council that they should grant them a lease for 130 years, which they would then sublease to Tudor House, conditional on the building being used for heritage and educational purposes. And from then on, the, uh, the management, we handed the management entirely over to Tudor House itself. And we began to prove to the City Council and the museum service that we could run a credible, sustainable museum. At this time, it became apparent that we needed to be accredited. Accreditation is a stamp of quality for museums. This was a daunting task. We were, after all, a bunch of volunteers without a professional museum background. This massive task was recognised by Worcester Municipal Charities, and they suggested to us that they helped by offering us a grant to pay for a curator manager. We welcomed this with open arms and hired Elizabeth Pimblett, who came to us with a wealth of experience of the museum world. I was brought in in 2013 to um, effectively change Tudor House from being a heritage centre, which had been beautifully run by a team of over 40 volunteers, to being an accredited museum. For two years, Elizabeth guided us through the accreditation process and we succeeded. Uh, we got it in 2015 and it was um, a very lovely procedure to go through with everybody, lots of support from the team. And I have to say, um, Tudor House was one of the best places I've ever worked. Our most ambitious project was to apply for a Heritage Lottery grant entitled The Untold Stories of the House. The most daunting aspect of the project was to restore the ceiling in the best room. The best room in the house is an upstairs bedroom which has a magnificent plaster ceiling. We were very lucky to have the help and advice of Peter Hare, a specialist craftsman who had moved into the area. I heard about the ceiling back in 2012, 2013, and I was living in London at that time. And uh, I drove up and, um, and, and you know, opened the door and wandered up this crookedy old staircase. I saw this incredible little allegorical carved ornamental ceiling. Um, not only was the paint um, delaminating from earlier coatings, uh, but the plaster work was starting to come away from the laughs um, and so it was a heck of a job that we needed to um, to contemplate but and we needed to move quite quickly but incredibly sensitively. One corner of the building had dropped due to the removal of the dormer windows. An extensive repair process was carried out using a local heritage architect and a heritage blacksmith. What we've got is a, a lovely old ceiling that is in really good condition and is looking forward to tell a story to generations to come in the future. And then there was the fabulous Bedfellows project. This involved a team of 40 or so volunteer embroiderers who using traditional Tudor techniques produced a bed cover and side curtains for the four poster bed in the best room. It was a great match to the restored plaster ceiling. Philip Jones rang me and said, how's it going now? Because he's long since retired. 
And I said, well, we've sort of been dumped, really. We haven't had a penny from the city council in 15 years. He said, I think, you know, he said, I, I think they ought to give you the freehold. They didn't want to give us the freehold. They liked enjoying the ownership. Um, so eventually we said, OK, and this was with Philip's advice, what about a 999-year lease then? This was in 2023. And the property manager said, yes, I'd be all right. <laughs> so, so they wouldn't give us the freehold, but we've got the equivalent for no charge. They've, it's completely free. This year, we secured the 999-year lease, um, which was a big thing from the council. Um, so that really kind of secures this place. Museums like Tudor House aren't safe in the hands of a local authority because when times are tough, you know, they think, well, we better sell it. I hope that we continue to get really great footfall, that visitors come to Tudor House, they discover something new, that we get return visitors, that the audience in Worcester understands and knows what a gem Tudor House is and that we have people from Worcester making return visits um, and just enjoying Tudor House which is part of this rich history and heritage that we have in this city. The future for Tudor House now looks bright. The house was built in around 1525, that's 500 years ago, and we look forward to guiding it towards its next 500 years. I am just pleased that Tudor House has evolved into what it's become, that it's in safe hands. Tudor House is just a wonderful organisation. It's going forward, and I think we can be really optimistic about the future. I love it when people come from all over the world, and I just looked at the uh, visitor book today, and it said that some people from Mexico had come, and that's, uh, that's excellent. But I also love it just as much when people from Worcester come, and they say, we've walked past here lots of times, and we've never been in, and we didn't know what we were missing and especially when they see features such as the, the ceiling. It's such a beautiful room and to walk past this place and, um, you know, not come in for years and years. Why? <laughs> you should have. <laughs> yeah. It's such a special place.